Namaste. My name is Henry Jodicar. I'm a French Canadian psychotherapist and a devotee of Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi. His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama said that Ramana's wisdom is now guiding millions of people on the path to enlightenment. Meditation scholar Ken Wilbert said that Ramana Maharishi is the greatest sage of the 20th century and one of the greatest light of all time. Carl Jung said that Ramana's teachings are the very best of what India has to offer. And Ramda said that the teaching of Ramana is a perfect balance between the head and the heart. Bhagavan was born in January 1879 in a small town in South India in the district of Tamil Nadu and was given the name Venkantaraman. As a child growing up, Venkantaraman loved all kinds of sports and did not show any interest in spirituality. There was no outward sign that Venkantaraman was about to become one of the greatest sage of the 20th century. Then, on July 17, 1896, at the age of 16 year old, in a room in Madurai, he had an extraordinary spiritual experience. An experience that is very rare in both Eastern or Western spiritual tradition. In a matter of 30 minutes, he had an experience where he became completely enlightened, awakened, self-realized. This state never left him. Several weeks later, he made his way to the sacred mountain of Arunachala, which is mentioned in various Hindu scripture, like the Skanda Purana, as being one of the holiest places of pilgrimage in India. There, on the sacred mountain, he resided for more than 50 years. In 1935, Paramamsa Yogananda paid a visit to Ramana Maharishi and basically asked him what was the best method to attain self-realization and to uplift humanity. Ramana replied that there was not one method. It all depended on the character and the maturity of the mind of the person seeking self-realization. Ramana later said that all spiritual teachings are only meant to make us retrace our step to our original source. I am that I am sums up the whole truth, he said, and the method is be still. I discovered Ramana Maharishi in 1991. At the time, my beloved wife Beatrice, the mother of my four children, had been diagnosed with terminal liver cancer. Being a student and an adept of Bhakti Yoga, Siddha Yoga, Kriya Yoga, and the Way of the Heart, she wanted to find the very best way to die, to leave the body. So while making research on the process of death and dying, 
I discovered that Ramana Maharishi had used a technique to help his devotee at the very last period of their life. A technique that he used even on his mother in 1922. The technique was simply to keep the right hand on the heart of the devotee and the left hand on the top of the head. And he would remain like this sometime for days with his devotees until they passed on. With full faith in Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi, me and my family and close friend at all time kept one hand on her heart and one hand on the top of her head. At the very last minute, she had a great smile and the top of the head, the shahashara, actually opened up without piercing the skin. And that's how uh, Beatrice left her body. This video is a pilgrimage to the holy sites related to the life and teachings of Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi. It is also a thank you note from myself and my family for all the blessing and wisdom that Ramana has brought into our life. We sincerely hope that this video will be a blessing to yourself and your families and friends. I'm on my way to Tiruchuli to visit the birthplace and shrine dedicated to Ramana Maharishi. There was a temple and there is a temple right across the street where Sri Ramana Maharishi and his father used to worship. So Ramana Maharishi was born right in front of a Shiva temple. This is what the original house used to look like. This is the birthplace of the one that would become the greatest sage of the 20th century, according to authorities like Ken Wilbert, Dr. Stanislav Graf, all recognize the level of enlightenment that Ramana Maharishi had attained in this lifetime. I am in the blessed room where Sri Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi was born. There's a story about Ramana child when he lived in this house. In many ways he was like any other child, but he had one particularity that when he would go to sleep, he would go sometimes so very deep asleep that it was practically impossible to wake him up. And for those who study transcendence, we do think that even at that time he was entering deep state of samadhi. But as he said later, it was not consciously realized until the experience of near death in Madurai. If you come to Madurai and are looking for the home of Ramana Maharishi, first find the South Tower of the Menakshi Temple. Right in front, there is a street. Follow that street and you will find Ramana's home. We are in front of the house where Ramana 
then called Venkantaraman, lived from 1891 to 1896 and attended British school. The house has now been transformed into a shrine to the memory of Ramana Maharishi. We are tonight in Ramana Maharishi's homes where he went to school and where he had that near-death experience that lasted 20 minutes and changed him forever. I am in the room where Ramana Maharishi had his near-death experience. He described this experience as being a moment where he ceased to identify with the body, ceased to identify with the mind, and for the rest of his life, he only identified himself with the I, with the Supreme Self. The Madurai Minakshi Amon Temple has been a center of worship for the Tamil people for thousands of years. Manakshi, the feminine aspect of Godhead, the wife of Shiva, is the main worship in this temple. Millions of her devotees come from all over India every year seeking her blessings. Ramana explained about his awakening. One of the features of my new state was my changed attitude to the Minakshi temple. After the awakening, I used to go there almost every evening. I used to go alone and stand motionless for a long time before the images of Shiva or Minakshi, outpouring my soul in tears. I would pray for the descent of their grace upon me so that my devotion increased and become perpetual. I am standing in one part of the Madurai temple. This temple has been in continual worship for more than 2,500 years. This particular structure has been built in the 16th century. The mountain has been a place of pilgrimage for Hindus for thousands of years. Arunachala is mentioned in the ancient Vedic scriptures, Skanda and Matsya Puranas, as being one 
of the holiest place on earth. Adi Sankaracharya referred to the mountain as the sacred of the sacred, the mystical Mount Meru. Venkantaraman arrived at the temple of Arunachalashwar, September 1st, 1896, with quick steps, his heart throbbing with joy. He entered the temple of his divine father and mother, Shiva, Parvati. All the doors were open, even the doors of the inner shrine. He stood there alone in a rapture of bliss and union with God. The temple of Aruna Cheleshwar is one of the five holiest places of pilgrimage for devotees of Shiva in India and is visited by millions of pilgrims every year. The prison structures date back to the 9th century, but Tamil saints and poets have been praising the temple worship here since the 7th century. Osborne wrote at the Iron Kulam tank, Ramana had his head completely shaved. Then, standing on the steps, he threw away his remaining money. He never handled money again. He took off his sacred Brahmin tread and threw it away in the tank renouncing not only home and property, but also caste and all civil status. He took off his dhoti, or Indian dress, tore off a strip to serve him as a loincloth, and threw the rest away. He then returned to the temple, having completed the act of renunciations. This is the place where Ramana Maharishi came and took shelter when he arrived as a boy really in Tiruvamanalai and heir he began his whole life as a jnani. Here in this hall of thousand pillars he sat immersed in the bliss of samadhi day after day, night after night, scarcely moving, never speaking. And then for several weeks, he sat in a dark and damp underground vault under the Hall of Thousand Pillars that was filled with ants and vermins. Part of his body became covered with open sores but Venkantaraman was so absorbed in the state of Samadhi that he was completely oblivious of his body and its pain. I am standing at the exact place where Ramana Maharishi lived in the Hall of Thousand Columns, right down this hall. The vault has now been transformed into a shrine called Patala Lingam in the memory of Ramana Maharishi's time in this temple. As you see, there is a Shiva Lingam that is worshipped here lovingly and regularly every day by loving priests. Thank you. The Virupaksha 
Paksha cave is venerated because of Saint Virupaksha Deva, who will live in the cave most of his life in the 13th century. Sri Ramana lived in this cave from 1899 to 1916. It was while residing in this cave that the early written works originated, like self-inquiry and who am I? Many devotees find meditation in this ohm-shaped cave to be a deep experience. arrival on the hill of Arunachala, Ramana was always attentive and affectionate toward the monkeys living on the hill. He watched them closely with the love and sympathy that a sage has for all beings. He learned to understand their cries and codes of behavior. Ramana said, Monkeys, as a rule, would expel a member of their group if he had been cared for by people. But they make an exception in my case. When there is quarreling among themselves, they come to me and I pacify them. Ramana Maharishi found a damp patch of rocks near the Skandarshan cave and rightly guessed that there was a concealed spring Devotees released the spring by digging, and to this day, the spring gives enough water for all the needs of the ashram. This is the breathtaking view from Skandarshan of the temple and of the city of Tiruvamanane. In 1916, the mother of Ramana Maharishi, Alagamal, and her younger son, Nagasundaram, renounced the world and came to live with Bhagavan Askandarshan. I have only one desire, said the mother to Ramana, and that is to die in your arms. Her wish was fulfilled on May 12, 1922 and Bhagavan declared that the mother did not pass away. She was absorbed. In other words, she had attained complete liberation, moksha. Bhagavan showed no grief whatsoever, and he and the devotees sat up the whole night singing devotional songs. Ramana said, it is only the body that dies and the I am body illusion that make death seem a tragedy. Because the mother of Sri Ramana was considered saintly, her body was not cremated. Sri Alamagal's body was put in a grave at the foot of the mountain, and gradually this magnificent temple was built on her grave or samadhi. The Mataru Bhateshwara temple, translated as God manifested as the mother, was finished in 1949 and is now situated at the heart of the Sri Ramana Ashram. Sri Ramana came down the hillside almost every day to the tomb of his mother. Then, one day, six months after her samadhi, 
he felt a powerful impulse to go down to the tomb and remain there. At first, there was only a few bamboo huts. Then a hall was constructed where Sri Ramana resided and received visitors from around the world. Bhagavan answered many questions, but Sri Ramana mostly taught by giving darshan in silence. Darshan means being in the presence of an awakened master and experiencing the spiritual transmission and blessings associated with his great state of enlightenment. I am about to enter the meditation room where Ramana Maharishi gave darshan for more than 25 years. In this room, Ramana received people from all around the world. Paul Brinton described what it was like sitting in the presence of Ramana Maharishi. After two hours, I became aware of a silent change taking place within my mind. One by one, the question I had prepared with such meticulous accuracy simply dropped away. Solving the problems that had been troubling me does not seem to matter anymore. I know only that a steady river of quietness seems to be flowing near me, that a great peace is penetrating the inner reaches of my being, and that my thought, torture brain, is beginning to arrive at some rest. Here we see Sri Ramana giving darshan. His brother now called Swami Nirajananda is next to him. Swami Nirajananda was the main ruler and organizer of the Ramana ashram till his own samadhi in 1953. He made sure that everything in the ashram was tidy, clean, organized and punctual. It was important to Sri Ramana that every guest should be given food immediately upon their arrival. Bhagavan himself would often participate in preparing and cooking the meals. Ramana Maharishi would eat exactly what everybody else ate. He never accepted any special treatment in food or anything else. Once a cup of South Indian coffee had been served to him, but only water had been served to some of his guests. Immediately he asked for a cup of water and never drank coffee again. He wanted to be treated like everybody else. Bhagavan himself treated everyone equally. Devotees would bow down before him, but he would say, I know that in their hearts they are really submitting themselves to the Divine Self, not to me. As his saintly fame grew around the world, he was visited by kings and queens of India and hundreds of thousands of people from every continent, including the famous guru Paramamsa Yogananda, who came in 1935 as a student would come to visit a master. Ramana Maharishi was kind and sensitive with all animals, peacocks, birds, squirrels, dogs, they all felt his grace. Bhagavan said, we do not know what souls may be the tenants of these bodies and for finishing what part of karma they may seek or company. 
but the most favored of all the ashram animals was the cow Lakshmi. Daily at lunchtime, she would accompany Bhagavan to the door of the dining hall. In 1948, when Lakshmi was near death, Sri Ramana paid her a visit. He looked into her eyes and put his right hand on her heart and his left hand on her head. Bhagavan caressed her tenderly for some time. A few hours later, Lakshmi passed away peacefully. An epitaph was put on her grave stating that Sri Ramana Maharishi had confirmed that Lakshmi had attained mukti, liberation. By 1947, the health of Bhagavan had started to cause alarm among his devotees. Rheumatism had crippled his legs and attacked his shoulders. Sri Ramana was now walking only with great difficulty. Then in 1949, a malignant tumor was removed from his left arm. Sri Ramana said, there is no cause for alarm. The body itself is a disease. Let the body have its natural end. The end came on April 14th, 1950. To his long time attendants, he said, Santo Sham, I am pleased. Thank you for your service. At the last moment, Bhagavan heard the devotees singing Harunachala Shiva. On hearing it, Sri Bhagavan's eyes opened and shone. He gave a brief smile of incredible tenderness. One more breath and no more. There was no struggle, no spasm, no other sign of death, only that the next breath did not come. Bhagavan had given darshan till the very last day. Now devotees were stricken with grief. We are about to enter the room where Ramana Maharishi attained Maha Nirvana on the 14th of April, 1950, at 8.47. The Sri Ramana Ashram lovingly maintained this room as a shrine to Bhagavan and as a small museum. Here we see various items that was used by the Maharishi, such as his water container for renunciate called Kamandalu, his cane, fan, drinking glasses, and so on. The calendar on the wall still marking April 14th. April 15th, by general agreement of his devotees, the body of Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi, with full honor, was lower to its final resting place between the hall and the temple of the mother. There was a silent grief among the assembled devotees. Everyone knew there would be no more beloved face, no more sound of his voice. From now on, the lingam of the polished black stone, the symbol of Shiva, would be the outer sign of his continued presence in the ashram and in the hearts of his devotees. Since 1950, Millions of people from around the world have walked around the Samadhi of Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi. This Hindu ritual is called Pradakshina, 
which means making God the central focus of one's life. Sri Ramana said, the master is not outside of you. He is within your own self. Seek within you and find him there. Then you will be in constant communion with him. The message is always there. The Guru can never forsake you, nor can you ever move away from the Master, for he is your own true self. Every night at sunset, facing the sacred mountain, devotees heartfully sing, Arunachala Shiva. Before Sri Ramana left the body, some devotees asked Bhagavan how they would get his grace and guidance after his samadhi. He replied, I am not going away. Where would I go? I am here. He added, you attach too much importance to the body. As the inner guru in our hearts, Sri Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi continues, now as then, to guide his devotees back to their original true divine nature the self.